right, welcome back to Jeff Quinnage Live right here on Citizen Television with an inspiring story, folks. Young ladies out there, let me tell you this right now. Dreams are valid. Because when Lucy uh, Gishohe was growing up in uh, Hidega Village in Nyeri County, little did she know she would end up as a senator in Australia, no less, with Muzungu bodyguards. How about that? <laughs> The story is so inspiring. We're going to start off with tweets, right, Monica? We do tweets first, because I know a lot of you are tweeting in. Tweets coming in thick and fast. Gadu, son of Nyeri, of course. This senator from my county is so encouraging, especially to us youth. Every dream is valid. I have a dream of making Nyeri great, though at my 20s I shall deliver when time comes. As an economist, as my namesake, Governor Patrick Gakuru. All right. Karaoke, Margaret, you say, Gishohi, your story inspires, inspires me and most African women who aspire to create an impact in the world. If you made it, then I can make it. I am looking up to you, and I hope you consider nurturing young women from Africa to rise to greater heights. Yeah, why not? Why not? Yes. Steve Jenga. JK Live, Senator Lucy is a great inspiration to every kid out there in the village. Indeed, all dreams are valid. Who is her role model? What programs is she running here in Kenya? Scholarships, etc. Maybe she can have a sitting with Nairobi Senator Sakaja and discuss the youth agenda. Okay, okay. Sam Josh, Sami Josh, you say. Congratulations, Senator Lucy, and welcome back home. Charity begins at home yeah. mm. the one before this asked yes. uh, your role model who's your role model growing up my role model my role model I would basically say was my mother and my grandmother because they were just concentrated on developing me as a woman and balancing career family life and taking each one of them very important right? and they, how they interact together so mm -hmm. my mother would say you are the backbone of your family and your community this is where my mother tricked us and told us women don't even drink alcohol she managed to tell me that and i believe her anyway <laughs> but i tried to use the same trick on my daughters it didn't work. Work. <laughs> 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 ah, ah, ah. <laughs> and my grandmother was such a phenomenal woman but they were just ordinary women working to raise their children yeah what many people may not know is that um you have eight other siblings eight nine other we are ten you're ten girls yes. we are eight girls and two boys two boys yes yeah, so ten in total two boys eight girls and you are number one number one yes wow that must have been tough. It must have been tough, girl. For who? For you. Why? Because of the nine others who are looking up to big sister. Well, my father said if he got in light with the firstborn, all the others would follow. And I think it worked for him. Yeah. <laughs> Did any of them join you in Australia later on? Yes, yes. Two of them. One of my brother is a permanent resident, but he lives here in, in Kenya. But uh, one of my sister lives in Australia. Yeah. Yes. So, um, growing up poor, going to the University of Nairobi, what did you want to end up as? What, what, what did you want? Initially, I just wanted to be a teacher because I thought teachers had good houses, <laughs> <laughs> cooked with the jiko, and they cooked rice. Remember, there was rice from where? The where? original, yes, yes and chapatis. <laughs> So food was very important in your life. I mean, yeah. chapatis was for Christmas, all right? Yes. Or if there's uh, somebody going to boarding school and there's that one packet and they make those chapatis and they take them with them, to, you know. <laughs> so you it wanted to be there. a teacher? I wanted to be a teacher just because I thought... And then? And then I continued being wanting to be a teacher. I still think I should be a teacher. <laughs> Because I think teachers are very wise people. I still think teachers are very wise. Absolutely. And my father and a lot of my sisters are, are, are teachers. teachers. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I think we have a soft support for being teachers. Yes. I still think I can be a teacher. Yeah, or for yeah. teaching others. So yes. When you applied for this uh, job in Australia, 
what was that specific job that i didn't apply for a job mm. i wanted to migrate to australia so how it all started is i was like i said my cousins got married to german people and they would come home and stay in my whole house and give me 50 Dutch mark and fit, mess around with my domestic economy. And I started thinking, if my cousins could do this, then I must rise up and start doing something more. So I was walking around telling my friends that I really want to go out of the country. By this point, 1999, I had not left Kenya. I have not even gone to Uganda yet or Tanzania. You, have, you had never boarded no, a plane? except to Mombasa. Mm -hmm. So... When, my when I started looking around and met a friend of mine who said, have you ever heard about Australia? I said, yes, in started for geography lesson. <laughs> and she yeah. said, what about yeah. in Australia you can migrate if you had a university degree then? And I said, I do have one. And I said, how? She said, just go to the Australian High Commission, which is on Shiromo Lane, and ask. And the following day I made my way to Chiromo found the gate and asked, I want to go to Australia. And they asked, what, to do what? And I didn't have a clue what I wanted. I said, just to go. And said, oh, are you a professional? I said, absolutely, I'm an accountant. Okay, skilled migration, oh, that one. So that is how it started. So I got the forms. I paid $500, got the information package. Those days there was not so much internet. It was, everything was... People, uh, not everything, a lot of it was paper based. So I bought the information, went back to the office. At this point, I was working for Madison Insu Insurance, mm -hmm. recruited one of my friends who was the human resources manager then. Her name is Wagoi Mohodia, and we started doing this process. And within three months, we had permanent resident visas to Australia. So it's a general, you go there and you are permanent resident and you work or study or do whatever you want. Yes. You know, the people watching you today who are going to line up at the Australian Embassy tomorrow morning, eh? They should have lined up in 1999. It was much easier. I told everybody I could find yes. about this. Yes. And a lot of friends took advantage. So ever since I won went there in 1999, I've encouraged more than 200 or 500 Australian yeah. Kenyans to come to Australia. It's very straightforward. Just make sure you do it the right way yeah. and don't engage agencies that you don't understand australian information is very straightforward so you arrive in canberra or what did you arrive? adelaide adelaide, adelaide yeah. okay mm. and what do you start to do we arrive in adelaide and we take the yellow pages yellow pages is the directory yeah, but where are you staying no somebody met us at the airport because there was a program called meet and greet organized by the government for new migrants so they meet you at the airport, take you to a residence, they give you a house for three months. A lot of cost subsidized. Mm -hmm. So we were there for three months. So within those three months, you look for a job. So we take the directory. It is called White Pages. Yeah, yeah, White Pages. And my husband is a quantity surveyor. So we start looking all quantity surveyor companies and we write to them. And within three weeks, my husband gets a job. What? Yes. But before he gets a job, we are getting excited and there comes people and say, oh, there are some casual jobs you can do for spraying fruits or flowers. And my husband does that for two weeks. Then he gets a country's affairs job. I get a job of cleaning a hotel and I try to do that with the babies. There are no house girls for your information. Mm -hmm. So I had that three months of trying to balance the kids and they are very young because how, how they were between they? 10 and 1. I had that gap, yeah. and without house girl, it was such a challenge. But I learned and learned very quickly. So within three months, I was able to get a job with Auditor General's Department of South Australia. Yes. So you just go. It's like moving to a new city. It's just like if you moved from Nairobi to Kisumu, what would you do? You would get there, find a job, ask around, how do I get a job around here? It's the same. Yes, it's yes. the same, but yes. you're the only black people there. <laughs> Matter. Come on, you, it does matter. Who cares? It does. It, they're all in whose mind? Look, there are no new these. They're none of they're not many of us. Then doesn't matter. Sure, it doesn't matter. No discrimination. You have 
your skills. No discrimination? Australia, they go by skills. They go by what you are contributing. However, if you have nothing to do, don't go to do it in Australia. <laughs> <laughs> You've Good. got to remain focused, to know why you went there. This idea of going there and to do nothing. Australia doesn't work. But if you have skills, we have a lot of Kenyan doctors, a lot of Kenyan professionals because of these skilled migrations. And Australia love people who contribute to whatever they are doing. So, so have, it yeah. is an environment where hard work pays. So you've never felt any discrimination in Australia? Well, I can say in my 20 years, I have been called a nigger once, but somebody on the street, I, th I didn't mm. think he's, but it didn't bother me. I, I don't think he was okay. Yeah. But discrimination, it is outlawed. It is legislated against. So I know nobody is going to openly discriminate against me. And why should it bother me? I'm black by nature. This is who I am. It doesn't bother me. Wow. Yes. That's a great attitude. Exactly. And the kids and the girls were any Well, uh, that is where I say, you know, the girls, I look back and can imagine my daughters being the only black kids in the school. Maybe they went through, and chances are they went through the nasty kids kind of yeah, experience. Yeah. But what I did, I started empowering them. At that point, I got there and realized, hey, we are in this place, and we are not going back. And there's no auntie, there's no show, show, there's nobody to help cushion that. Yeah. So I really got down to the level of my daughters, tried even reading books and reassuring them with them, you know, building their self-esteem from very, very young. It must so have been tough. It was tough. Yeah. The first two years yeah. it was, hey, what am I into? But you know what? One way ticket, we are not going back. We are making it where we are. At one point in those first two years, did yes. you think, you know what, maybe we made a mistake here? I didn't think I made a mistake. I was thinking so badly how I can get into my mother's house. <laughs> <laughs> and I was thinking, how can I get my house girl here? <laughs> <laughs> where can I find my... <laughs> Because there's none of that. None of You're that. And I was doing everything. And my husband was working so hard to adjust from the African yes. man attitude Correct. to start helping in the, in the house. house. So we were working so hard. It was the most challenging time of that cultural adjustment. But I'm glad we did it. Yeah, incredible. Yes, yes incredible. we did it. Yeah, but it wasn't easy. Yeah. It is not a walkover. It is no, it's like a wedding. You know how in the wedding people just prepare for the wedding day, but nobody prepares you for the long month. <laughs> <laughs> hey, smart advice here. Yes. Smart advice. So, uh, yes. when did you move from Adelaide to Canberra? Uh, I haven't moved. You're still I, in Adelaide? It's a, a flying fry out. Okay. So, when we are, the sitting is in on, I fly to Canberra, do the two weeks, yeah. come back. Normally, we go back on Monday morning, come back on Thursday night. Adelaide, and so. then fly back to uh, Ca Canberra on Monday morning. Yes. Wow. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Is that tough? It's no. Why? It's a job. How many hours? Two, uh, one and a half. Flight. Yeah. Wow. Wow. It's a job. <laughs> it's a job. Are you enjoying it? Love it. I love As my job. As I asked job. you before, this yes. party called Family First, yes, which you had joined. Yes. How did you join this party, by the way? So this party I joined, I was I finished my law degree, and when I finished my law degree, I was just in the process of looking for a job. One of my mentors was Mark Mudri, my current chief of staff, was my mentor because he's a senior lawyer. So like 30 years experience in Adelaide. I was just coming off law school. So he was mentoring me. As we started talking, he thought, hey, I think you should go and do much more. You need to go and do an internship that involves a week's work in the Australian Senate. That is where I went. So when I was interning, and interning meant shadowing one of the senators, double dissolution happened. That is both houses of parliament were dissolved because of legal technicalities. Mm -hmm. And every parliamentarian had to go back and seek legal ma new, new mandates. So this party needed a number two on the ticket because that is the requirement. 
and uh, the person who was supposed to be number two on this ticket thought no I can't quit my job to do this and at that point this senator asked me whether I wanted to be number two and I thought wow number two of a senate y ticket but wait a minute you're an intern yeah in his office <laughs> <laughs> we no. have talked for exactly two days you've, <laughs> you've <laughs> talked for two days exactly and worked on a case where we have taken the government to the court because it's trying to change the electoral process and we have lost the zero seven so and he asked you do you want to be my running mate or my exactly. number two yes and i say yes no i call my father who is in hiriga and i say Fafa, <laughs> and he go, go for it. And I said, this is the man who knows me. <laughs> Are you serious? Exactly. Yes. So, he, so dad says yes, you yeah. agree, yeah. and you become the number two. Exactly. Fast forward. Yes. Elections are held. Yes. Your mentor is in. Yes, uh, and yes. the family first. The family first gets, because remember, it's party politics. So the family first gets one Senate position which is taken by the first candidate. How did you campaign? Oh, I did. Initially, the first two weeks, I was thinking, I'm um, just new, I'm learning. Then somewhere in between, I thought, hang on, I better put everything I can in this process. You never know what comes out of it. Me, I was thinking it was just, as a lawyer, it will just leave my profile a bit. I'll get to know one more person, and I'll get to know how the politics works. But then halfway through, I thought, you never know. <laughs> Give it your all. And I actually start, went full brown, did my recordings, introduced myself, and did anything I was required to do. Went door to door, meeting people, convincing them that this is a party worth voting for. Yeah. But okay, help me out here. Um, someone from Herega Inyeri is campaigning deep down in <laughs> Australia. Yes. You don't even speak their language, and they have a funny I, accent. They speak English. What you speak is not really English sometimes. <laughs> You're from Nyeri. I speak Nyeri English. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're like the late great professor Wagari Mathai, and it's like uh, exactly you shrub with swag. Exactly, proud so. Uh, pr you see, pr proud so. Exactly. <laughs> so when you're campaigning, what yeah. are the Australians saying? Are they, they saying say, who is this person? I, I let me tell you one of the examples, the most profound thing I encountered just three weeks ago on a flight from Adelaide to Dubai, to Doha. I met this lady who sat next to me and we started talking and she was speaking deep with UK accent. Deep, I could tell it is. And she said, oh, I'm going home. And I said, oh, how long, how, what are you going home? One of my sons lives there. So I'm thinking she'd come to Adelaide to visit her children or something, maybe for three weeks. And she said to me, oh, um, I occasionally go there to see my son. And I said to her, how long have you been in Adelaide? She said, 40 years. And her accent was intact. And I thought, why do we bother trying to take other people's accent? Yet, and I was so validated in my nearly accent. So if I'm struggling to understand her UK accent, yes. I'll keep my nearly accent. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody has the responsibility to communicate effectively. Mm. I think that's all we yes. are supposed to do. And that's all I was doing, knocking door to door, is to make sure I'm communicating effectively. Okay, mm. you're not going door to door. Yes. You, they open the door, yeah. they see a black yeah. woman. Yeah. Again, you know, I, I'm just asking, because, you know, those who have never been outside this country, they need to understand that when white people open a door and see a black person, it's not always a good welcome. But they see a human being. Aye, 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 aye. Exactly. Whether you where, see where black, is, white, where yellow. Aus, where you is this see? Australia? <laughs> Down under where? Down under, they open the door, they see a human being. So you say, hello, my name yeah. is Lucy Gichohi. Gichohi, I'm yeah. running or uh, Freedom Party or Family First. Start from my first year. Is running. Exactly. And I explain the policies. And we need to start strong for our families. Yeah. And they what? what exactly. We chat. Yeah. Australians are very, very flattery. And they're also human. 
you know, these differences are so skin deep, we have no idea. Any other way is total ignorance. And remember, my people perish because of lack of knowledge. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. It's total ignorance. Our differences are this skin deep. So, yeah. election day. Yes. Family first. How yes. many votes do you all get? Ele so, when you are there, you, there, was, there was a change in the voting process. So you either, you can vote in two ways. You either vote for the party if you agree with the way the party has ordered its votes. So one block above the ballot, you go, I vote for family first. That means you agree with voting Bob first. And if we get enough votes, Lucy goes second. So we get enough votes above. But below the votes, there are people who would like to vote for me, but they don't like Bob. Or they like Bob, but don't like me. So you have another line below the vote, and people are free to go pick choosing their preferential candidate. Okay. So we get enough votes to get us above the lines, but just number 12, because number 12 is the last. We were such a small party. So we get number 12, the last spot in the Senate ticket okay yes so you're in or one bob, bob our is it, yeah, party well, is in yeah. with one Person. spot one spot yeah okay. and bob takes it because he's the first on the ticket and then what happens then unfortunately bob had financial issues and he gets into bankruptcy so he's disqualified really yes if you're bankrupt in australia you get disqualified from sitting in the Senate. Uh. you can't Take, Come on. You can't take a parliament. A leadership, public leadership? No. What if you're found to be corrupt? Uh, oh, you don't even get there. Hiya. Where is this place we all go? <laughs> <laughs> it is an integrity system. It's backed up by integrity, which is so heavy, weighs heavy on uh, everybody. And they check everything? They do check. You declare your wealth publicly and everything you declare your exp everything is public you declare your wealth <laughs> you declare your expenditures if you give me a gift i have to declare it come on <laughs> Wait, uh, hey. i can't take a gift even if you give me a i have to say i got this from jeff i was going to autograph my book for you do you have will you have to say yes, declare? No, no 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 a book is 25 dollars it's below a certain amount if a book is about twenty-five dollars. So that's yeah. okay. That's okay. Yeah. If it, what if it's? 20? And it's a book anyway. It will be sitting on my shelf, and everybody can see you it. Can read it. <laughs> yes. My God. <laughs> I, I, God. <laughs> you know, you need to come and talk to our people here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So Bob gets into financial problems. He's yes. declared bankrupt, yes. and he has to step down. Yes. Right? Yes, he resigns. He resigns. Yeah. Which is the honorable thing to do. Which is the honorable thing to do. And the intern who had been in his office for two days. <laughs> for one week. One week. And interacted with him for two days. And other than the campaign period. She found herself as the senator. Yes. You can't make this stuff up. <laughs> no. This is a movie. It's all documented. <laughs> Okay, so obviously the, it goes to the courts. Yes, the, the reason it goes to the court yeah. because Bob Lee signed in the Pote manual or whatever it is, the executive, the party executive had the choice, could have had the choice to pick one of the, uh, anybody else, or Bob who could have chosen somebody else. And he actually did choose somebody else. Oh. At this point, he didn't pick me. But then there was another technicality because he had now other issues that meant he wasn't faraday supposed to be on the ticket in the first place because he had some pecuniary indirect interest oh. way before that. So that is another add to the mix which yes. makes this thing just like an old testament story right. so <laughs> so yeah. bob has other issues yes so he's that basically he's now disqualified he's exactly he wasn't supposed to be in the, ticket the ticket in the first place so now the whole matter goes to court because we are saying was bob supposed to be there because if he was supposed to be there then he could have picked whoever he wanted and he had picked but i said no i was number two on the ticket 
so you can't just lock me out. So then we go to the court, and the court finds that Bob was not validly elected. Wow. So that changes the equation, and all his votes now Come flow to, to me as the only valid candidate on the ticket. And here's another c technicality. The court looks at you. <laughs> they something. see this new <laughs> And they say, this person is not Australian. It's not the courts. Who did? It's other candidates. This position could have gone to so many other people. Yeah. yeah. So those other politicians who are eyeing this position went to court and said, hey, it is not Australian. Mm. And I said, I'm yeah. Australian. <laughs> wow. Yes. Because and it, that yeah. too goes to the court. And that would have disqualified you, right? Absolutely. You can't be a dual citizen. So the issue was, am I a dual citizen? Or are you Australian? Or am I Australian? Okay, but, uh, the constitution changed in 2010, you well know this. Yes. And now we're allowed dual citizenship. Yes. Can you have that now in an Australian parliament or still no? No, I can't be an, dual. Now, a dual if I'm a Commonwealth parliamentarian in Australia. Uh -huh. Yes. Wow. Yes. All this was seven months ago? Exactly. Seven months ago? Yes. Okay, Monica, before we go to break, there's a picture when you, obviously you've been here for a month, you started yes. with mostly holiday, turned out to be an official trip. Yes. And one of the, or one of the first places you visited yes. was State House. Yes. Right? Yes. Go on, what was it like visiting uh, Ikulu? Wow. Visiting Ikulu was just like being with other colleagues and yeah. other working Mates. Yeah, and but you but you you met the president. I met the president. Yes. We had a very good rapport, yeah. and we talked about a lot of issues that one affect both the, both of countries mm. and how we can use this time. Yeah, to there's pictures over there when you uh, when mm -hmm. you met the boss. Yes, yes. In his office, there you, there you are. Exactly. Uh -huh. Yes. So we are. And, and you you're both kind of the same Rika, right? Exactly. Yeah, we are like the same. We are like age mates. Yes. Yeah. So. We've oh, there are those muzungus opening your doors again. <laughs> My goodness. My, I wish I had those kinds of guys with me. Hey, 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 what do you want me to do here? So, so was fun. the president was great, he was yeah, gracious. He was very great. Yeah. We, the best thing we had is good communication, yeah. so that anybody us talk about a lot of things, yeah. including domestic violence. Yeah. yeah, because something you you're see, very uh, vocal exactly, about. Exactly, yeah, especially because near women uh, have this bad image that they beat their husbands, and we don't. No, no, we don't. No, you don't. You don't have that bad image. <laughs> <laughs> we the don't. minute we hear you're from Nyeri, <laughs> no, we don't. So domestic violence, yeah. it's very sad. It costs the government a lot of money. Yeah. Even in Australia, because we can never eliminate violence, it is so expensive. And a lot of these criminal activities need to be dealt with as criminal activities. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. So because people need to be safe in their house. Yeah. I saw the uh, Kenyan ambassador to Australia in that picture, Isaiah Kabera. Yes, uh, yes, 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 yeah. yes, nice yes, guy, yes, good guy. very good guy. For, former he journalist. He really, really helped us settle into politics, uh -huh. especially navigate around protocols. Is that right? Yes, yes, uh -huh. he was very, very helpful to, yeah. to me and my team. I like he the, still yeah. is. I love the way you say, Lily, Lily, Lily. <laughs> 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 you know what? I will never be able to tell Aras from else okay. because yes. in Kikuyura yes. my first seven years of life I spoke nothing and read nothing other than Kikuyu language. Do your kids speak Kikuyu? Oh me I speak Kikuyu to them they choose what to speak. Nice. Yes. So in Kikuyu language there is no R. Yes. No, there's no, no L. There's no L. So when L is introduced later in life, I think too late. Later so, in, later in life, correct. <laughs> You're incredible. Don't change, please. Do not change. <laughs> Stay like Too that. Red. What am I gonna? <laughs> natural. It's natural. 
<laughs> and I tried. Yeah. I wasted so much time trying to fix that, and I gave up. Well done. So, well done. Yeah. That's good. So, <laughs> you are, you know, you 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 are what you see. Yes. You 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 exactly. know what you see is what you get. Exactly. Well done. Yes. Well done. Yes. Let's take a break. Come back. Yes. Talk some more mm -hmm. because domestic violence is big on your agenda. Yes. And other issues that are close to your heart. Yes. And also, you saw the MPs here. Mm. Monica, real quick, sorry, mm -hmm. uh, but we saw the MPs giving themselves more money yes. like they need it. Yes. How much money do you make in a year as a well, senator, which is public knowledge, right? Uh, yes, my salary, I hear it is somewhere on the website. Yeah. I don't look at it because it comes to the bank, but it's not a lot of money, by the way. Go on. Pa politicians, and I mean Australian politicians, work so hard 24-7 nobody and i mean nobody can compensate them for the work they do especially though those who have it as a their calling yeah. their passion right this is pure kujitorea but but it needs to be done within reason how much you get how much i get how much do you get a year me 200 australian dollar 200,000 Australian dollars Two, in a whole year that's not a lot of money 200,000 Australian dollars yeah. times let's say about what 82 that's about yeah, six, 16 that's, million a year mm -hmm. 16 million Kenya yeah, shillings right, yeah. divided by 12 it's about 1.3 ish 1.2 1.3 something close to that yeah Monica how much do senators here make about 1.1 1 .1? yeah so it's it's not it's 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 a reasonable pay do you get perks Parks are like uh, I have. Y you you've got all other those other things yeah. are taken care of. Yeah. yeah. And you get work done. Y yes. Yes, I do get a lot of work yeah. done. Yes. Do you think they get work done here? Well, this is where we are, and I keep on saying we are only five years into the new constitution. About seven. Two, seven. Yes, yeah. seven years. And we just need to be patient with ourselves because politicians don't pay themselves. We have the executive who, which, who work out what the government can afford to pay. So if we had the pro proper separation of power, the executive would be able to say, you legislatures, we can only afford to pay you this much yes. because yeah. this is how much the government has in levy. Yes, the so yeah. they don't pay themselves. If we had the proper separation of power, yeah. Somebody should be able to say that we can only afford this much. Yeah, but they did try that, and then they were beaten off. Or they were yeah, that was that story was killed in Parliament, and they continue to give themselves pay raises and perks and mortgages and loans and all kinds of things. Back pay now they there's a billion shillings which we are going to pay for now. Yes, and back pay. You know what? Mileage, travel. Uh, you know what? As long as we continue with identity politics and continue to pick our leaders based on anything else other than character and integrity, we will continue to pay this kind of prices. Absolutely. Yeah. Well put. Well put. Let's take a break. Come yeah. back. And that, that's a really good point. Mm. It's a really good point. Yeah. I mean, goodness mm. gracious me. I see the guy resigned because he was bankrupt. Yeah. And corrupt people aren't in office. You can't because you are soon going to be fouled out and you can't. You can't. There's no place. Guy far far. <laughs> Monica, let's take a break. This is just too much for me now. It's just too much. I, I, can't, I can't take any of it. <laughs> JKL takes a break. Keep tweeting at Senator Lucy, at Koinanga Jeff, at Citizen TV Kenya. The hashtag, as always, is JK Live. JK Live takes a break. Plenty more ahead. We'll be back with the incorruptible Senator Lucy in a moment.